Hi folks, welcome back to the Cannabis Corner. I'm your host, Kerry Burns. I'm sure a lot of you out there, as myself, have run into individuals that have lied to you or in some way tried to deceive you or, or do something that you knew wasn't on the up and up. And as a result of that deception or whatever, they had to either continue lying about something or, or you know, play the game to, to keep make you think that you're a bigger fool than they actually, you know, believe. But, uh, this is kind of like how our government's been doing the pot issue, and this started long ago, back in the early days, even prior to the 1937 Marijuana Tax Act. But these groups of senators, just a handful and a few representatives and some of their cronies, they got together and met for the most part behind private doors. And they would occasionally open up these hearings to the public where people would come in and could address the, the quorum and tell them what they thought about uh, them taking hemp and making it uh, taxable and all of that. Nobody ever thought there was going to be anything that, that there was going to be a law where you'd be arrested for, you know, possessing cannabis and all. The main issue then was to uh, tax the hemp and, and talk about how much revenues and stuff the different hemp producing areas could produce and all. And they, of course, had a lot of different people coming in and giving testimony and all. And the medical field, when they got, the, got wind of the fact that what really was going on is that they were going to outlaw cannabis then uh, many of the known doctors in the day, the, the physicians from Harvard and all that, they, uh, you know, went in there and had their say in the Senate floor, but they always scheduled anybody that had opposition at the, toward the end of the day. That way they could give them a very brief time to speak, and if they didn't get everything said that they wanted to say, they couldn't come back the next morning and continue and all. And this was done by design because they didn't really want any opposition, and if you were on their side, you could have the floor as long as you needed it. And it's, it's, this was the very beginning stages of the lies and deception that the government got, did, not only meeting behind closed doors, but actually passing the 1937 Marijuana Tax Act illegally. They knew this was an illegal act, and they used an old tr uh, Treasury Department trick to, uh, to trick the farmers. Now, they, they told the farmers that they had to bring in some of their hemp to the Treasury Department, and then they would be issued their stamps and they could pay their tax and all of that. And really what happened was, it's just like what's going on today, you, they brought it in and they were arrested because they were in violation of the law. They were possessing hemp and they didn't have their, their, their stamp or their tax paid. And this type of deception was wrong. It was wrong back then. And they, they did the same thing when they tried to round up all the machine guns uh, from the post days of the... Uh, of the prohibition period and all. And they told everybody out there that possessed the, uh, these things, they had to come in and get a special stamp from the, from the Treasury Department so they could possess this thing legally. And what they did when the people brought them in, they just confiscated them. So that was a, you know, lies and deception. And th this is nothing new with our government. This, uh, even back then before the Marijuana Tax Act was passed in 1937, the, uh, the negative propaganda about cannabis and all the dangerous effects and how it was going to cause the white women to run away with the black slaves and the black, well, not the black slaves, but the black people, and that the Mexican people in uh, New Mexico and all were, you know, being a bad influence in these towns and all, even though they were doing most of the, the sharecropping and the work and stuff for the farmers and all. But uh, anything they could do that uh, was negative, they had the campaign going 90 to nothing. And this is what you have to do when you, when you tell one lie, you have to continue and keep beefing it up and making the story sound better and better. And they got really good at it, except they really were kind of caught off guard for a brief moment during World War II when uh, the hemp supplies that were shut off from the Philippines. So here we were, we were in a quandary. We had to start growing hemp again here in this country. And all of a sudden it was this happy-go-lucky film about uh, hemp for victory and, and, and they set up a major uh, hemp production going on with the government. And we harvested, we had a good good harvest and good success and all that out of it. And then following the years after the war and all, we went right back to the negativity and the, the all of the negative propaganda. Of course, we were going through the period in this country with McCarthy and the, the uh, Cold War and the, you know, the Soviets and all of that was going on. And, and a lot of the, the thinking of this deception and lies and stuff was, is deeply embedded in those lines of thought and thinking that those people were doing anyway in, in, in normal government. And we proceed further into the 60s and we, we went into the Singles Narcotics Treaty. 
there was a major discussion about cannabis. They were actually going to leave it off of the Singles Narcotics Treaty. It was suggested that they leave it off of it and all of that. But the United States, with Anslinger, the very first guy that was in charge of the, the first drug uh, gang, if, if you want to call them that, he was also the one that was, had a very major influence in the Singles Narcotics Treaty and getting cannabis put on there. You see, Anslinger was one of these federal people that during prohibition he was one of the ones that chased after the bootleggers and those and the people that were uh, you know that were selling alcohol illegally and all and then when they made alcohol legal uh, he just shifted about two years later his uncle Mellon who was head of the Treasury Department they just said hey let's make cannabis illegal and you'll have the, you'll have a good job and that's basically what they did and and this carried on unfortunately through the decades and and all through this whole time, people have been being brainwashed and lied to about the effects of cannabis and how dangerous it is. And, and yet during this whole time, nobody ever died. Nobody ever went to the hospital for it and all. And, and there, you, when you lie to somebody and you deceive somebody, it's very hard for them to ever trust you again. And this is really where the American people are with our government, just on this issue alone. I mean, there are many, many more, but this one has its roots in lies and deception and they began what back way before the marijuana tax act was ever even passed and we didn't do any different when nixon came in he he had a, had the uh, shaver commission look at cannabis and all they did a one-year study they couldn't see really any issues and all and they even talked about how this is just another prohibition that what this is going to do is result in the building of a lot of gangs and things like that nixon ignored it more deception more lies passed the Controlled Substance Act, not only put cannabis on there, I mean, you could have given us a little leniency, hey, Schedule 5, maybe, you know, not such harsh penalties. Oh, no, no, let's put it at the top of the list, Schedule 1, in the most severest, hardest category they can they have on the Controlled Substance Act. And even though the cannabis they knew didn't follow the three criteria that are required for the Controlled Substance Act, didn't follow any of them at all, and this was just another way that their lies and deception continued and then we go you know through the late 70s and early 80s and the reagan bush years papa bush and and then the just say no program and all and i mean then things just really escalate all of a sudden cannabis was you know it was just as one of them the dea themselves said that it was their top priority still is today i mean 65 70 percent of what they do is just to stop cannabis at the border or to make cannabis cases here in the united states and during this whole time, we have to have people that snitch on their friends because they, you know, they're working for the police or they got caught and they've got to get out of their little things of what they do. And it just brings about more deception and more lies and more deceit. And, and I, I just don't see where, how is all that worth it? I mean, when we have a substance that really is basically harmless, I can't really think of another substance out there, of any of that are out there illegal particularly, that this one could be any kind of problem. And it's proven it. Statistics have shown it. Yet we still have this deception and this lies from the DEA, the lies from the government and all, and they continue this hardcore approach. I don't even want the medical marijuana because all that's going to do is just give the government and, and all the states and all more regulation and more control. The only way this is going to work is outright legalization. If people want to use cannabis for medicinal purposes, that's their God-given right. If people like me want to use it just for social reasons or just as a daily herb, a daily tonic, something I think that's a very beneficial herb to use and all, so be it. It's, it's nobody's call but mine, what I want to put into my body. And this is where we are in the United States. We're being controlled, and this issue itself, not only was it born in lies and deception, but they keep the lies and the deception going. And, and it, it, it's, it's just escalating. And... I think that America's really, if, if you look at what we're founded on and what we're all about at all, it certainly isn't in that realm of lie and deception. And it's certainly not what our founding fathers had in mind when they set this country up. Well, it wasn't to set up for the government to deceive the people. It was set up for the people to control the government. And we certainly have gotten way away from that. But we've got to get this issue turned around it's uh, we've got to show people that all of these lies and all the deception that's gone on through the decades and it's many many layers of it it's you have to just peel them back one by one by one by one and 
and show people that this can be a benefit to the society and, and bring about the hemp industry, which would be a benefit to our economy. Help us, will you? I'm Kerry Burns, and I thank you for joining the Cannabis Corner.